Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy, Sires, and today we are making a jungle guide for Pokemon Unite. It's going to have what you need to know to get started and to even win your ranked games. Now, I have timestamps for the specific sections in this video, but I really do hope that you stay for the entire video because I think it will be beneficial to you all. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with answering the question, what is jungle? Well, in Pokemon Unite, jungle refers to the area located at the central part of the battle arena. Here, you will find wild Pokemon and you will even find some berries. The Pokemon that you will encounter will be different than the ones you encounter in lanes. For example, you will encounter Lillipop, Ludicolo, Buffalant, and you will even encounter Corfish. And these all have uniqueness about them, which we will go into when we speak about the jungle path. So why should you pick jungle? Well, jungle or central, as it is called in Pokemon Unite, is the fastest way to accumulate EXP early game and it gives you a considerable amount of EOS energy which is needed to score points. You have access to some special Pokemon which gives special buffs and the best part is that you don't have to worry about fighting over anything because the jungle is a solo lane. I also believe that the jungle is the most important lane in the game because you have the most influence and impact over the entire map. The first Pokemon you will encounter in the jungle is Lillipop. Upon defeating Lillipop, you will gain 2 Eos points. You will also encounter Ludicolo. Upon defeating Ludicolo, you will gain 4 Eos points. And you will also gain a buff. And the buff reads, when this Pokemon's attack hits a wild Pokemon with low HP, they deal increased damage. You can even see the blue indication showing increased damage on a weak Pokemon. Another Pokemon that you will encounter is Buffalant. Upon defeating Buffalant, you will gain 4 AOS points. And you will also gain a buff which reads, when this Pokemon's attack hit, they decrease the opposing Pokemon's movement speed for a short time. You can even see the visual effect of an orange indicator on a slowed opponent. And you will also encounter Corfish. Upon defeating Corfish, you will gain 3 Aos points. It should be noted that in the last 2 minutes of the game, Lillipop evolves into Herdia and you will now receive 3 Aos points upon defeating it. Ludicolo will now give you 7 Aos points, Buffalant will now give you 7 Aos points and Corfish evolves into Crawdont and will now give you 4 Aos points. When the game begins, make sure to learn the highest damage output out of the two abilities that you have available to clear camps as fast as possible. Only Lily Pop will be available and he will head directly to the spawn point of Ludicolo. Both Ludicolo and Buffalon spawn at the same time, 945, but since Ludicolo is right there and also gives a buff that increases damage on weak wild Pokemon, you should prioritize taking him first. Then you can head over to Buffalant and defeat him to obtain his buff and because you already have the blue buff, it will be easier to defeat him. Then after you defeat him, you can head over to the right hand side which you will find Corfish. When you defeat Corfish, if you see an opportunity to help the lane that is close to Corfish, do so. If not, 
go over to the other crawfish and complete a full jungle clear. While doing my last jungle camp, I saw that bot lane was severely pushed in. So I immediately head over to give assistance. And it's a good thing I did too, because there were three enemies bot lane. And you know what? We actually picked up a kill. In a similar situation, I saw that bot lane was pushed in and I head over to give assistance. It's important to always be watching your map so that you can know when to capitalize on when an enemy is overextending in a lane. After a successful gank, I head to the central part of the map to do the jungle camps there, since I don't want to waste any time when I can actually be gaining experience points and EOS points. And <laughs> I kind of stole the top laner's Pokemon as well. But I'm always watching my map, which you should be doing also. And I saw that bot lane has once again overextended, so I head right back down bot lane and help us secure more kills which results in a better advantage for my team. And because we have secured the kills and there's no one left to defend the goals, we can score without any interruption. Not all the time you will see an opportunity to gank in the lane that is closest to you. But I watched my map and I saw that Vulpix is alone top lane. So I go top lane to give her some assistance so that she is not left alone. And that actually helps us out in the long run because we hold the lane long enough for Zera Aura to come back and we get a kill. There are some situations where you won't necessarily be able to get a kill. But remember, the main objective of the game is not to get kills but to score points. And if there is an opportunity to sneak some points in, use that to your full advantage. In this scenario, I saw another opportunity to sneak some points in and in doing so, I also draw the enemies to me, which takes pressure off of my teammates since they are already at low HP. When Rotom is up, remember to go and give your teammates assistance. Ensure that the enemy does not steal it and that you can help protect your teammates giving them additional numbers to the fight so that you can get the Rotom for your team instead. Rotom is a very important wild Pokemon, so try to make sure that your team gets it and not the enemy. If possible, escort the Rotom to the nearest enemy goalpost and score your points. Because the Rotom is in the goalpost, you will instantly score points without charging. In this clip, we saw that there were no enemies around. So we take this opportunity to do Dreadnor. While doing Dreadnor, enemies were quickly approaching. And just by a hair, we got the Dreadnor in time and defeated the enemies that approached us. With 2 minutes left in the game, we know that the enemy team would be desperate and try to take Zapdos to make a comeback. So we engage in a team fight, preventing them to do so. We make sure that there are no enemies left, so that no one on the enemy team can steal the Zapdos from us if we were to go and complete it. Because remember, 
all you need for your team to obtain Zapdos is to get the last hit on it. After defeating them, we take Zapdos for ourselves to make our lead even bigger. Zapdos is very important, not only for you to have Zapdos, but to make sure that the enemy team doesn't have him. Zapdos can completely turn the tide of a game in your favor, or it can be your worst nightmare and make you lose the game. When selecting your Pokemon, press ZL and go to Map Path and select Edit and set your path to central area so that your teammates will know that you are planning to jungle. This will indicate to them that the lane is taken and that they can go elsewhere. You can also press the minus sign to say a quick chat which says I'll head to the central area. Unfortunately, there are times when your teammates will refuse to cooperate with you and will follow you in the jungle. This can be for many reasons. Maybe it's because they are new to the game and they don't understand what jungle means. Or they can just be stubborn and want to jungle for themselves and decide to go there. Anyway, the hard thing to accept is that there's nothing that you can do about this. Your teammates will follow you into the jungle they will steal your camps, they will take your EXP, they will completely mess up your jungle path that you have designed just for their selfish gain. And you know what? You are just going to have to take the L and leave the jungle and go in a lane where there is no one there. I can't count the number of times that this has happened to me. I chose the central area, I told everyone that I'm going to the jungle, no one indicates that they want to go to the jungle as well, but when the game starts, for some reason, they come and they just begin taking my camps. This is a problem that we need to solve. Share this guide so that other people will know that jungle is a solo lane and you can call for the lane that you want before the game even starts so that this will avoid this situation which actually puts your team at a big disadvantage. Another tip is to pick up the Salak berries that are in the center of the map so that you can move even faster throughout the jungle. One of the tips that I learned the hard way is not taking Fluffy Tail. Yes, Fluffy Tail is a jungle item that helps you clear camps faster, but it actually doesn't make a significant difference. You will be better off taking an item that synergizes best with your specific Pokemon. Just because you are in the jungle position, it doesn't mean that you have to live there. A great tip if you want to be a great jungler is knowing the importance of helping your teammates fight against enemy Pokemon and securing important objectives such as Rotom and Dreadnought. The most important tip is to ensure that you are constantly monitoring your map, waiting for the opportunity to strike, and adjusting your playstyle according to where the enemies are. Out of all the roles in the game, I believe that speedsters are the most suitable for the jungle or central lane. I recommend choosing Pokemon with high mobility and damage output as they would benefit the most from the high EXP gain and will be the most likely able to capitalize on it. And if you read what a speedster is, they fit that position perfectly. Some honorable mentions are Garchomp because of his ability to close the gap with either Dig or Dragon Rush and also Crustle because of his high mobility when he takes Shell Smash. You can technically jungle with any Pokemon, but it will become very apparent that some are just better than others. This is simply my opinion and recommendation of the Pokemon that are currently the best junglers.
Because this is a general jungle guide, I will not go into each Pokemon specifically. If you would like to see a jungle guide for each of the Pokemon recommended here, tell me in the comment section below and I will be sure to make it for you. I will mention the held items for that Pokemon and suggest which ones are the best to use and what battle item you should be using on them to make you the best jungler that that Pokemon can be. Thanks to everyone who clicked on this video and especially to those who made it this far. I'll actually be uploading my best jungle gameplay so far so that you can see a full game of a jungler in action. And I also have a series entitled Pokedex Entries where I dive into the skills and abilities of each Pokemon so be sure to check that out. But without further ado, let's wrap this up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure and hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video or it was helpful, make sure to smash that like button. And of course, you know who it is. It's your boy, Siles. And Crocky, until next time, peace out.